we go. So, hello. Hi. Hello. To start off with, could you both please just tell me your names and where you are right now? I am Lars. Um, and uh, we're in our house in uh, Gnesta, a little town about 75 kilometer, kilometers south of Stockholm. Mm. And this is my wife. Mate. Mm. My name is Mate. It's nice to see two people in the same space with no masks on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. yeah. It's exciting in these times. So yeah. the first question that I have for you is, um, who are you for each other? Can you tell me a little bit about your relationship to each other? Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, how am I with him? <laughs> <laughs> We've been together for 32 years. Yeah. And... Um, Wow. <laughs> Who are we for each other? Was that the question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it may be a strange way of framing it, but... Yeah. Well, I would say that we are kind of supporters for each other. And um, uh, as it, I think it's been that already from the beginning, we've been supporting each other's development in different ways. Um, because uh, already from the beginning, we had both ideas about what we wanted as uh, growing people, how we could mature together and, um, um, well, our personal development was important mm. from how we met, actually. So I think that's, uh, that's sort of the ground and also that we are a good match. Uh, I have uh, a, a different energy than he does, and uh, it, it really sparks off each other. So um, uh, it's a good match. He's, he's, he's one of the best in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fortunate. Hmm. Can you tell me a bit more about that energy? How do you see each other? Hmm. Well, when I met him, I thought he was very calm, which he still is, and um, very, very wise, which was a good projection. Hmm. And, uh, and I was more like uh, outgoing, energetic, social, open. So I've been, I feel like we've been taking the projection more and more back. Uh, to to be more whole as a person. So, but we still have it. I mean, I'm still more energetic. I usually bring home new stuff and new ideas, and, and then he just goes, "Oh, wow, we try it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you. Yeah, you're sort of the pioneer. Yeah, and uh, have a have a very sensitive nose for what's what's effective and uh, what's interesting for our development and, um, and usually I, I, I try it out and uh, sometimes it's not really for me so you do it yourself or whatever happens and sometimes I take it over and you leave it mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's um, sort of a um, what do you say? Uh, collaboration mm. in spiritual development in some way. Mm. Hmm. That sounds very interesting. And I'm curious about you separately. Who would you say that you are, each of you, as a person, as a human being? And I mean, that can speak to your values, qualities about yourself, your passions, whatever you'd like. Mm. Well, we talked about that because we knew that that question would come. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so what I said was that that is an ongoing process for me. I mean, what is my authentic me? 
I got a lot of patterns, uh, which is quite nice, but uh, I'm always searching for, go deeper and see more of me. Um, but I think that I have a lot of joy. Well, I know I have a lot of joy and uh, curiosity and never, you know, never think there is a yes or no or right or wrong or because uh, that's not the way I think. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I would say I'm quite easy person of uh, uh, what did I, intuitive, intu, intu, intuitive, intuitive, intuitive. <clears throat> So when I work, I've been working for 30 years as a Gestalt therapist. Um, I just know, I just know. I don't have so much theory or if we work as a couple therapist, he is the only one, he's the one who's doing the, the, the theory. <laughs> I just work. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I have a lot of uh, lust or a uh, lot of joy, but also a lot of sadness. I mean, it's so big. I got, yeah, I got everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're obviously a complete person, right? We all are, so <laughs> oh, it's just, yeah. it's kind of a game, you know, to see which parts pop up when I ask the question. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Mm. What about you, Lars? Who are you today? <laughs> no, today, that's a <laughs> yeah. good one. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I'm I'm a, a bit of a, or at least I've been a very polarized person, uh, split into different parts, and uh, uh, exploring these parts in different. Um, periods in my life and um, some of them has sort of opened up because I felt stuck in one part and I needed to challenge myself so I sort of just threw myself into the positive or the op opposite uh, to find out what that was like so it has taken a lot of time many years to to bring these parts together into some kind of coherent being and uh, today I think I, I, I'm uh, very much in contact with all these parts and uh, all these uh, endeavors that I'm pursuing because of my different interests and sometimes I'm interested in too many things I think and I say yes to so many things because uh, I get enthusiastic and um, then I get overwhelmed and I have too much to do. So I need to maybe break with one or the other and just do one thing at a time. And it has to take the time it takes. And well, uh, I'm both a, a split and a coherent person. <laughs> uh, that and almost I, sounds mature. It sounds oh, like almost, there's... yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And also, I'm, I'm, a, as a person, I think I'm. Uh, I often get feedback that I'm a very kind person, uh, and uh, that I, I look for the good things in people, and I also. Got some feedback from beside you when you said that. Yeah. <laughs> that and also, uh, I, that's also feedback that I sometimes uh, am a bit naive <laughs> when it comes to people. I don't suspect very much about others. Uh, this could be a hook or a bad person or whatever. So um, I tend to look for the good things. Uh, although I can be very self critical hold myself back and, and um, um, 
letting other people stand out more than uh, going out with myself. So this is a bit nervous for me to, to open up to really look out in the world and letting others see me <laughs> just for who I am. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. So the next question is actually a little bit uh, historical. It's about what you would identify as an event or as a set of circumstances, either in your individual lives or as a couple that you would say has really defined in some way who you are. Because sometimes, you know, if you spend 30 some odd years together, I imagine you have some shared events that have also changed or shaped things that you've gone through together. So whatever you'd like to speak to, mm. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I oh, sometimes come to think of a, it's a bit of a story, but it's also uh, one of my first memories that actually shaped me and it, it was when I was about four or five years when circus came to town and uh, I got very excited about this and could see the wagons coming through and longing for this so I decided uh, to just go there when they <laughs> opened uh, leaving my family I didn't say anything to my parents, I just went there and realized that you had to have some kind of uh, to be permitted to go in. So I was watching people go in and decided to go very close to another family with children. So it looked like I belonged to this family. And then I went into the circus and inside I felt very free. I, w I didn't belong to any anyone. I just could choose my seat and I, of course, I chose one in the front. And while this was happening, all this performance and exciting things, suddenly everything stopped and a, a grown up leant over and said, what's your name? And then I said my name and he said, you should go out because your mother is waiting for you. And then I went out. I don't remember what happened afterwards, but uh, now as a grown up, I can see this as a sort of a metaphor for uh, finding an opening in, in, into a greater life, into a wider world than I had from home. And I think this is something I've been searching for all my life or going back and forth through the, these dimensions. That, that's that really beautiful. A, and understanding the social ways that can open the door for you. That's really yeah, interesting. I, yeah. Hmm. So maybe that's what I got a bit polarized because it was two opposites. <laughs> and uh, when I get stuck in one, I look for the opposite and see what that brings. It may have been okay for you. It may also have scared the people around you. Yeah, yeah. Sure A lot did. of novelty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I learned to hold these things back mm. while quite small. So mm. that's uh, sort of um, a dealing with myself when I come in, in these situations. Yeah. Um, what about you, mate? Um, well, I think it's been, <clears throat> I, I, I left uh, my, I lived in a small town in uh, kind of middle of Sweden, which was kind of, um, well, narrow minded. And I remember when I left there after school, college, 18 years old, and I never never went back i mean i went back for for visiting but that was a big event it was like somebody took the cork out of the bottle and you know and i kept on traveling and going around the world and living different places we lived in japan and us and uh, 
So uh, that was huge. That really changed my life that I can realize that life was much more fun and excited than I've been living in this small place. And um, yeah, there, there are certain places or things that ha happens. But one of the biggest was when I met Lassa, I've been meeting other people that also was changing, but I think now I want to tell you about when I met Lasse 32 years ago. That was, uh, I mean, life changing. <laughs> and uh, and he was already a Gestalt therapist, and I was working as a drama teacher. Um, so I thought, what what's a what is he doing? He's such a great person, you know. And he told me about his education and uh, and I started as well quite a couple of years after. So that was life changing for me. I didn't realize, I didn't realize either why I was crying. I, I was madly in love, but I do kept crying a lot until I realized that that was the first time that I actually got to be seen. Uh, on a deep level, uh, so there's a, there was a lot of grief at the same time, uh, and uh, the other thing was uh, when our child came, twenty six years ago, which was also very big in uh, many ways. Gestalt was also, I mean, the the therapy. Uh, Education was also a big step. There, there were quite a lot of them, but I think mm -hmm. this is one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. It sounds it sounds interesting. The the crying and the feeling of being seen. Yeah, that was huge. Mm -hmm. Never seen those kind of eyes before. Yeah, mm. yeah and, and I'm I'm curious. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, the Gestalt, finding Gestalt was also a, a big change for me. Um, as it felt like I got an, a new psychological family in, in the, like the Gestalt community and all of my friends and teachers and all that, the whole Gestalt field of being as a person was, uh, very encouraging and, and, and also, and yeah. You Now you froze, what happened? <laughs> I, I think I'm back. Oh, yeah, back now back. you're back, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, what I just, I asked, how did you get into Gestalt? How did you get into that circus? Uh, well, I was, um, uh, I worked as an artist at the time, and uh, I still do, but um, that was my profession at the time. And I was quite isolated in that position. And uh, after a few relationships that broke, and uh, uh, I, di I, didn't, I didn't want it that way, so I, I looked for therapy in some way. And then Gestalt, came came up for me and and it was like coming home in some way it was precisely my way of thinking about life so it was perfect it was just a, another perfect match <laughs> in, um, in life uh, and at the same time when when uh, I just wanted to say that when I met mate it was the first time I met a real woman, I think, uh, without all these projections and all these uh, fantasies about how it should be, because you were so authentic. Mm -hmm. You were um, uh, just the one you were, and, and no, no games and all that. Mm. Uh, so, uh, 
that was uh, really a change in, in outlook of what could what could be. So uh, so he nice. he actually got depressed. Yeah. When I said to him, <laughs> "I want you," then he got depressed for a year <laughs> because he got so scared. And I didn't. So he a... got depressed, and you cried, and it. Yeah. So that that's what I should look for to make sure that it's love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Real love. <laughs> no, that's when the wounds comes. Yeah, when it's apparent what you've been struggling with, when all the patterns come up, and you right, just and you have to really go through all of those barriers, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. yeah. Well, you both seem much better now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess it's yeah. a long-term process. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So other than meeting each other, I'm curious if there have been uh, people or a person in either of your lives who has been a really big influence on you in some way. It can be professionally or personally. Hmm. Yes, uh, for me, I, I, I think of two persons. Uh, the first one is my grandfather, my mother's father who uh, was a very stable person in, in my view and uh, very fair, very um, um, well, he, he could say things like that was very, was fairly, fairly done or something like that. And also no one could really uh, sit on him I don't know the word for that. Mm, put you, him down. you couldn't put him down because he was so, he had um, integrity. And in, yes, integrity, mm. very strong integrity. And he also could use words in a, in a way that he could sort of just point at someone and say something in a humorous way that wiped his mask away. So they couldn't get to him in that sense. And it, I felt that was a real strength. So he's sort of a, uh, a role model in that sense. And we named our son after him? Yeah, his, his second name. <laughs> his first name is Joan, and the second name is Eskil, <laughs> after my mm. grandfather, yeah. Lovely. And what about and this, you? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, the, the second one was a teacher in, in seventh grade. Uh, I had lived quite uh, in, inhibited uh, until then, but in this uh, class, he, he uh, opened up for creativity and, and freedom. In, it was quite a lot like this teacher in, in uh, Dead Poet Society, that film with... Uh, What's his name? Mm. William Williams. Robin Williams. Robin yeah. Williams, yeah. Mm. He was a bit like this teacher. He sort of wanted to bring out the, the authenticity and freedom in his pupils. And that happened to me. And then a whole world opened. So I came back to the circus world in a way, opening up for that. Mm. Yeah, so that was my second... <laughs> And that's a beautiful age for that to happen. Yes, it is, certainly. Mm. So now what about you, mate? Well, I do have a big trust issue. So I, uh, I don't have, uh, well, my grandmother, she was, uh, she was a warm woman. I don't have so much memory of her, but in therapy and you know in life i can feel when i think about her i feel like a warm feeling mm. then i met when i was living in uh, hawaii i met this my ex-boyfriend an english guy and uh, lived with him for seven years we were traveling around the world and um, somehow open up my sense of humor, the joy with him. 
-hmm. He was uh, love English, British humor. We were laughing and laughing. And that was a big step to realize that there is joy in life. Mm -hmm. And I usually learn a lot from people how not to be. So, uh, except from Lassa. <laughs> <laughs> the big exception. <laughs> mm. And my son. Mm. Yeah. So I don't have I don't have that many actually. Mm. I have enough. You I have don't enough. have to have a huge list. I'm just curious. Yeah, I have enough. <laughs> so I have asked, sort of switching a little bit, um, how you came into Gestalt, uh, but I'm curious what you found in Gestalt therapy. What is it that has kept you involved with it um, over the years? What, what is the particular area or aspect that has kept your attention? Hmm. Uh, for me, I think it's the, the holistic view that uh, to really see that things are connected in different ways. And I have a certain uh, feeling for when uh, people from different cultures meet over the borders. And uh, that could be cultures, just different families or different opinions or whatever culture you're in. But when, when people reach out to meet over those borders, then I uh, get very touched and, and moved. And I think that Gestalt opened a perspective of seeing these uh, connections, how things are connected, even though they might be um, opposed to each other in one way. And therefore, uh, I think it's uh, a good, I think we in Gestalt have, have uh, good things to do in the world right now that is very polarized to really see the connection and, and also bring people together in different ways. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just having a little discussion here. Um, uh, coming. <laughs> so what, what have you found, mate? What is it that's kept you there? Uh, yes, it's been keeping me, still keeping me after 30 years. And uh, it's like Lasse says, the holistic, the wholeness. I mean, the, it's so, it, it gives me so much to work with. There is, you know, big scene. Um, even though I'm may, maybe got some... I work a lot with here and now and the body and um, projections. Uh, so I don't, but you can, I mean, there's four, five kind of root systems that you can just, this, this is so much richness in, in it. And um, I haven't done anything else but working with it for 30 years and uh, I feel like it never ends. It's so rich to me. And have you had challenges? Have you run into parts? Because I, I don't actually know much about the work that you've done, but I know I've heard about you from someone who trained with you and this someone lives in India. So I'm assuming that your work is fairly far reaching, but I'm, I'm wondering what difficulties or challenges you've run into working in Gestalt for so long? Mm. Is there anything it hasn't been able to do or places <laughs> you've been stuck? Uh, I mean, we, I'm, I'm a, you know, we both are uh, egen for uh, Well, we run our own companies. <laughs> <laughs> we run our own companies. So that is a has been a, a mental challenge sometimes, but that is more like from my trust issue problems, not feeling that, you know, am I going to survive kind of wound. But 
when I look back, it's always been clients, it's always been work, it's always from day one. So we've been talking about something now lately that, you know, Gestalt doesn't put the labels on people. I mean, there is a meeting, you and I, uh, or in groups. So I can see now in the background, in the back mirror, that there has been <laughs> a beautiful child you have there. <laughs> I just try to keep him off the internet, but sometimes I, I know he wants to know who she's talking to. So uh, I can see now that I've been working with some clients a little bit too long when they have had really tough um, wounds and I didn't have really the tools for it. But at the time, I mean, they were satisfied and they did grow. But I think that a couple of clients that I had over 30 years, which is not that much, it's been too hard for me. I mean, I, I wish I had more knowledge in, in, in that sense. Of well, those are some of the challenges. And I, I do agree with those for sure. Um, and I'm also wondering on, on the positive side, what some of the possibilities that you've discovered are? What some of the greatest things you've been able to achieve? Positive um, erfaringer. Well, um, for me, uh, challenges and um, good things that come out of it sort of uh, are stuck together uh, because uh, um, yes, it's something about biggest, polarities i've noticed yeah, that too yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of my uh, challenges has been uh, and still is i think it's an eternal human uh, dilemma it's to to learn to to be with others and still be with myself. Mm. So that has been a big challenge for me when working with groups, for instance, and also being in groups and being with other people. I just go into a room and, and uh, as soon as others are there, I forget about myself and sort of jump out of myself just to see what is needed here. So that's been uh, codependent. <laughs> codependent <laughs> says, uh, of course. Uh, so that's a challenge that I'm working on still. And uh, of course, the, uh, in that sense, I've also had very, very positive experiences when I've overcome this and felt that I come back to myself and I can stand on my two legs and be there with others. Uh, so it's uh, connected, <laughs> the challenges and the good things. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is that, uh, you know, I don't work with the groups. Yeah. I just work with <clears throat> couples and individuals because groups, has been a trauma for me after the, the, um, the education, four years with uh, Gestalt. So, uh, and also before that, and also coming is, I mean, it's coming from the family group. So I haven't been uh, doing any groups. I mean, I've done it, but, so that's not my strength. It's too, too challenging still. Yeah. Mm. But couples I love to work with and clients, individual. Mm. It's interesting. I've heard more people be afraid of couples than of groups. Mm. I, I mean, I don't necessarily want to call it fear, but a lot of people tend to choose, I guess, groups over couples work. Something yeah. about the intimacy and the delicacy. It's, it can also, I think, yeah. just be very triggering for some people to look mm. at how couples really work. Yeah. 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 Mm. 
No, I, I, yeah, I really I'm enjoy. just thinking out loud there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I can understand that because uh, when we have quite a few times worked together as therapists with couples, and uh, there, are, there are a few uh, situations where after we had a certain uh, project, like uh, meeting a couple half a day, and then they slept overnight, and then we met them again next day. And sometimes it happened that when we came home from the first day, we started to quarrel mm -hmm. and got into some kind of uh, crisis or conflict or something like that. And after we had solved our things that came up, the day after, the couple we met had solved also theirs, or it wasn't an issue anymore. And that's also a perspective around field. I think. I was going to say, it sounds like there's some field theory in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So if something happened uh, while we solved our things, that had an impact on the couple. Mm. So uh, it, it can be very uh, challenging also in that sense that you have to meet yourself during the process and also your partner <laughs> if you are too. That's true. That's very true. Mm. Hmm. So do you have a particular greatest memory? I, I don't even like those words, but is there a particular moment in the work that you've done or in the experiences that you've had around Gestalt that stand out that you would say, you know, this is my favorite story or this is my favorite moment with a client right now. It may not be yeah. always the same, but. I have one actually. Uh, um, I'm in, in, in a group we call the nourishment group. We have been meeting as long as mate and I have been together for 32 years and are still meeting. And uh, a few years we were inviting leaders from outside. And once uh, Peter Levine, who who later on developed somatic experiencing uh, came to us and w was with us a, on a weekend. And after that weekend, I had a, a group course together with a colleague. And I was so inspired by Peter Levine and his way of looking at using metaphors and images and inner, inner uh, images. And I was like flying this week as a therapist and finding metaphors and symbols and things connected to uh, bodies and, and uh, thinking and fantasies and all. And I think that week was a, a fantastic experience in, uh, let's say, um, what do you say? Um, boasting my self-image <laughs> as a therapist. <laughs> then it, it faded away a bit, this inspiration, but uh, it was a quite interesting week. But it's exciting. I love that description of flying as a therapist. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's exciting to be that excited about something that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, really. Mm. What about you, mate? Um... Well, I feel like there's something every week that touched me or, you know, so I'm not sure if I can find any specific, I was, that, I had a, a, a mother and a grown up uh, woman and her mother, which was new to me and that was touching to be able to live, to work with a mother and daughter. Uh, but there, there is always touching and special, often, often. So I can't, I can't pick one. I got my name. <clears throat> and I, I'm also wondering, I don't really, like I said, I don't know the context that you work in. But do you feel like you're part of a Gestalt community? Does that phrase mean anything to you? Mm. I have a no and a yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. No, that doesn't mean anything to you. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I have... Uh, you took all over. Yes. Uh, He's the spider. I have the subscription on that. 
community, I guess, because uh, many years back, I've come sort of in, in, in the middle of, of our community in, in Sweden. And at the same time, I feel that I'm on the out, outer border of, of this community. So I'm sort of stepping in and at the same time, I'm outside. I've always felt like, a, felt like an outsider. But uh, I, I very strong have a feeling that I'm part of this community. Yes, because you, you mentioned that feeling of coming home and sometimes that's... Yeah, yes. And I also feel that uh, when I met uh, Gestalt people uh, and also work together with others in Sweden or in, in, uh, in other countries, uh, although we come from different cultures, we have sort of the same language because of Gestalt. We, we know what we're talking about when we talk about awareness or contact and all these, uh, these words. And uh, there is an understanding that brings us together, I think. So I, yeah, I feel part of it. And you are also, uh, you are in all these organizations. Yes. I mean, he's in everything in Sweden, all over the place. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm the CEO of a, a new company, a Gestalt company, uh, where we have made an, a website that, where we uh, tell our stories about what we are doing and this brings together three big organizations of Gestalt in Sweden, uh, where we use this as a window for our, our things that we do, both therapists and uh, organization consultants and the education, Gestalt Academy. That so sounds, that sounds very much in, Yeah, I'm in, involved in many things <laughs> right now. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now, I for me the 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 education was was a kind of a trauma. So uh, I I I didn't feel like coming home in that sense. I fe felt coming home in the methods uh, in work at working as a Gestalt, but the the four years. Was it four years, four and a half years? I learned a lot by not what you shouldn't do as a therapist. So that mm. is a, 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 that is a good way of learning it, but it, it was hard, it was very hard. So somehow I withdrawn and um, you know, I'm working a lot, so I don't have time to do so much more than working and painting and uh, you know having a good life but i do miss some colleagues sometimes but i also have lasa but it would be nice now i feel like more and more that it would be nice to have some colleagues but i never felt an urge for it before hmm. i appreciate you saying that um i mean i, I don't expect to only say beautiful things about gestalt all the time so I think a lot of people do identify with the training being traumatic and being sometimes very upsetting and discouraging as well. So I appreciate that you said that. I, I am curious though, because I mean, I only have questions about what I have questions about. So I would like to know what you would ask each other at this point, what questions you would ask each other, if you can think of one. As uh, in Gestalt? Or? As Gestalt therapists, as human beings, as anything so that you would like to ask. I would about. ask, we were talking about shame before, mm -hmm. that it's a shame to, to be seen and to talk and to be heard. So I wanted to ask you, do you feel shame? Do you feel any shame now? Not so much. Um, I feel warm hot in my face but I, I prefer to to um, what do you say when you are i prefer to blush uh, instead of feeling shame 
because I like people blushing. It's very authentic, I think. Mm. <laughs> uh, but right now, right now, I don't feel much shame. You look alive. Uh, yes, I feel alive. <laughs> so we've managed to find that, that edge where you can blush but not feel ashamed. Yes, right. <laughs> Thank you. What would you ask me? Do you feel safe now? Mm -hmm. I feel safe. Mm. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. He is an expert, though. I would say that to put exactly, you know, put a name on. I am not. I can, you know, have thoughts and ideas. But then he goes, do you mean like that? And I go, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wanted to say that. I think that is uh, incredible. And that when we work as a therapist, you know, I, I did a lot of deep the, work. The groundwork. <laughs> deep work. And yeah. then they could look at him and say, okay, what happened now? <laughs> <laughs> and he could explain. Okay, this is what happened. Like, and what was that called? And then he has yeah. the name. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, I was I was in, I was wondering about that because you talked about shame and you talked about trust issues. And I was wondering if you felt comfortable. I was wondering if you were able to trust this. So this um, glad yeah. that you both asked those questions. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Mm. Well. So thank you for that. And the, the last question that I really have is what is next? I mean, 32 years, but I'm assuming you're not stopping tomorrow. So what is next for you, either in life or in Gestalt? And where do you think Gestalt can be going from this point, from your perspective? Hmm. Um. Well, it's, it's always hard to think about the future, <laughs> but um, I have a sense that uh, in my different things that I do, uh, one main thing is, is uh, art and painting. So I, I have recently found uh, a new way of expressing myself through painting. So I have a, uh, a hope that it will lead to more of that and also to uh, an exhibition at some point and um, uh, even using that more for my um, feelings for the world and for, for uh, the development of all that is happening now in the world and my way of uh, commenting and uh, expressing uh, my inner feelings for that. So that's uh, something I'm looking forward to. Um, and that brings also the other things in the same line, actually. So, well, that's, and, and about Gestalt, I think Gestalt has a lot to, to offer the world in terms of what I described earlier. Uh, and at the same time, I know there is uh, a lot of discussion about how, how will Gestalt survive without doing research about what we're doing and to, to find credibility to the outer world. We need to show something about what we are doing in that sense. Uh, and I'm curious to see where this discussion takes us. So we'll see what happens. We found the take. We need to have the exhibition. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm looking at his latest uh, picture uh, painting. Do you want to see it? You can go and get mm -hmm. it. So, so, I'd love well, to. Yeah. yeah. So it's incredible. But I, I think that what I'm, what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm trying to, not trying. I'm doing my best to to like, uh, heal my wounds yeah. so I can come out even more for Gestalt and for the world. So I feel like I'm, I'm under a radar. I'm doing a lot of good work for a lot of people. 
but I think I like I need to more I need more on my feet so that's what I'm working with for the sake of the world mm. Does it make sense to you? It does yeah. make sense. It absolutely yeah. does make sense. Because, because I, I mean, your stout is, I mean, phenomenal. And I love to take it out in a much bigger step. But that's nice, though, to come back to the personal part, to go back out and then come back in and then go back out. Yeah, out. because it I can't do it. I can't do it if I don't have on my feet. You know, mm. some people can, but I can't. You know, they, they do it without having anything on the feet. <laughs> it has to come. I don't know yeah. how well they do it, but they I try. know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so here's so the thing. Yeah, yeah, end of this. Is this the end of the... Is this is so magic. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yes. That is beautiful. Yeah. And now what's the story? Well, the, the story is about um, uh, the things I feel is threatened in the world. And uh, it started out with uh, that the seas are threatened because uh, people are fishing too much. But uh, then I was looking for front figures into this, into a painting about that. But then I found these beautiful uh, old women, pictures of them. So I mixed a few of them in Photoshop to something new. And then I printed that and uh, painted this picture into this image. So it's about uh, indigenous people and uh, cultures that are threatened in the world. That's how it how it mm. came to me. That's beautiful. That is a mm. lovely piece. Mm. Yeah. Oh. I so don't she, really know how it, how it she, she can be. Now there are three of you in the interview. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask her something. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I've been living with him for such a long time and never been interested in art until two years ago, I started to paint. Yeah. And it felt like it came from nowhere. But it didn't come from no, I mean, it came from me working with all my trauma, so I could, didn't have to carry it any longer. So now I paint every day, every mm -hmm. day, and had five exhibitions. And now I really understand what, you know, appreciate also his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we do, yeah. we do, we do painting together, we do gestalt together, we do holistic living together that's a good mm. it's a good life yeah thank you that is, that is lovely is there anything else that you feel like we've missed that you'd like to share at this point hmm. no no i think this this is a way of being ourselves with you next week yeah. if you come we probably show you something else <laughs> <laughs> it would be completely different but yeah thank you so much i really appreciate this this has been lovely if it's okay with you then we will leave it here for now yeah. yes thank, thank you, you heather <laughs>